The following is a production of Learfield Sports. This copyrighted telecast is the property of Black Bear Sports Properties, LLC, an affiliate of Learfield Sports, LLC, under rights granted by the University of Maine. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, reproduction, or other dissemination or use of this telecast or any part of it without the express written consent of Black Bear Sports Properties, LLC, is prohibited. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Black Bear Insider. I'm your host, Brian Sullivan. We've got a great show on tap for you this week. We'll speak with Maine baseball coach Steve Trimper about what he thinks lies ahead for his team this season. Plus, we'll hear from super sophomore Ben Hutton. He and the Maine men's hockey team trying to move on in the Hockey East playoffs. Plus, a few lucky fans were selected through the Black Bear Nation app to have dinner with the team. We'll take you to that meal. Plus, we'll have part two of our track and field GoPro footage. This you don't want to miss. Plus, look at the upcoming schedule and much, much more. This is the Black Bear Insider. The Black Bear Insider is brought to you by U.S. Cellular, Fisher Plows, the UMaine Fitness and Recreation Center, EBS Building Supplies, and the Law Offices of Joe Bornstein. Shouldn't your network work, even when you don't want to? Whether you're out of pocket up here, decompressing way out here, or defrosting just the other side of nowhere, shouldn't the choice to be out of touch be up to you and not your spotty wireless provider? At US Cellular, we started our network where the others left off, bringing 4G LTE to nearly 90% of our customers. We've got local and national coverage covered. U.S. Cellular, hello better. No matter what your game is, indoors or out, the Student Recreation and Fitness Center at the University of Maine is your place to play, work out, relax, and have fun. The Rec Center has state-of-the-art cardio and weight training equipment, a pool, spa, and sauna, a running track, and more than 60 fitness classes a week. Or take your game outside with the Maine Bound Adventure Center. Hit the climbing or bouldering wall. Learn how to kayak, go rock climbing. Whatever game you like, the Student Recreation and Fitness Center is your place to play. The Fisher Extreme V. V Plow Performance Defined. Until now. Introducing the Fisher XV2. Taking V to a whole new extreme. Extreme flared wings. Proven trip edge protection. Double acting cylinders. A new generation in V Plow Performance. The XV2. Only from Fisher. To learn more about the XV2 and to find a dealer near you, visit fisherplows.com. Welcome back to the Black Bear Insider, joined by Maine baseball head coach Steve Tremper. Steve, thank you very much for joining us. Yep, thanks Brad, for having me on. Here we are in Orno. It's very <laughs> snowy. You're leaving us. You're going to go a long way for a couple of weeks and uh, get ready to play some baseball. You guys are away from Orno for a long time before you play your first home game. We are. We have our first 25 games on the on the road this year, which is typical. And you know, you have to deal with it. We're used to it. We don't know any better, to be honest with you. And um, you know, we try to schedule our, our, our games early in the season with some great competition. Um, obviously, you want to pick some places that's going to have uh, a challenging uh, team to play against, but also good weather. Hence the reason why we, uh, we've already traveled, you know, in the early season down to Miami mm -hmm. and to Clemson, two teams that are ranked in the top 10 in the country right now, yep. and started out with those guys. And, uh, you know, had a great showing in Miami. We, uh, we, we knocked them off on Saturday night, 3-1. to one. Scott Heath pitched great. Uh, we played well for basically two-thirds that weekend and snuck out of there with a win. And uh, the Clemson trip, we, same thing. We didn't get a win down there, but we played extremely well on, on two of the three games. Um, you know, but again, you're playing teams that are probably should be ended up in Omaha at the end of the year mm -hmm. with uh, the type of talent they have. And then we embark on the spring trip coming up, which is a 15-game road swing where we get to play a lot of great teams. This might be one of the hardest schedules I've had since I've been at Maine between the two ACC programs. And then going down to Florida, playing schools like uh, Stetson, Florida uh, Atlantic, um, Furman University won their conference last year. So did you know, Iowa's a great program. So there's some good schools that we're going to be playing down there that will be challenging. Uh, what's it like? What do you take away from taking on schools like this, testing your mettle against yeah. some of the teams that are in the top ten in the land, yeah going to be in Omaha, you've got, the guy's got to get up for that, and it's really going to help you down the line. It does, and baseball is, is unique. It's different than other sports. I think if you put our football team up against Miami and Clemson the first two weeks, they probably wouldn't have a lot of guys left because they'd be hurt. <laughs> so, um, you know, in baseball, it takes one guy. You know, our pitcher can go out, and you can play good defense, mm -hmm. and you can be in a ball game. And, you know, we're going to win our conference by pitching and defense. 
you know, it's how we've been successful the last few mm -hmm. years. So if we go into those games and, uh, you know, you play good defense, you pitch well, throw, you know, throw the ball on both sides of the plate, you got a chance of winning a game, hence the reason why we beat Miami. Um, you know, and I think for us, the, the biggest challenge is, is the early part of the year, we're just not consistent yet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not being on the field. The biggest thing that people don't understand, <clears throat> the dome is great, the indoor facility is great, but having your kids pitch off a dirt mound yep. and taking ground balls on a dirt field, as opposed to the turf that we play, is a little bit of a challenge. So um, that's why we do play a little bit of in inconsistency in the beginning part of the year. Um, and the other thing that's nice about those programs is they're going to jump on you. If you if you make a mistake, it's not going to get a strikeout the next time. I mean, they usually come back with a double or a stolen mm -hmm. base, and they put pressure on you, which makes us play perfect or have to play perfect. Um, and, and in conference, that's what we need to do also. We might get away with a little bit more, but we really want to get ourselves ready for the conference play for the tournament. You mentioned pitching and defense being so important. What can people expect to see from this year's club? What's the makeup going to be? How are you going to win games? Yeah, you know, I tell you, this is one of the better offensive clubs I've had. Um, we, we can swing the bats well. We're actually, um, we have a couple of our guys struggling at the bottom of the lineup, but if you take our top six hitters, we're coming out of the first two weeks um, hitting 340. And yeah, that's remarkable because everybody we saw was 93 plus. <laughs> we, we saw some 98 mile an hour arms the last couple of weekends. Mm -hmm. So um, I think our offense is going to be strong. We, we have tremendous legs. We, we run, we put pressure on defenses. Um, our outfield play is, is very deep and, and very good. And our catching core, I really like our catching core. Um, our, our, our infield defense is what we have to, have to work on. You know, we made some errors down in Florida, uh, excuse me, down in Clemson that cost us the game, actually. So we just got to kind of become a little bit stronger on that. Um, you know, so you talked offense, you talked defense. Pitching-wise, it's a very strong team. <clears throat> we have a great college pitching staff. We don't have a pro staff right now, meaning um, we only have two or three guys that are throwing in the 90s. Most of our pitchers pitch in that 85 to 88, three pitches for strikes. They move the ball on both sides of the plate, um, and that wins. Again, Scott Heath was 85 to 87 miles an hour against Miami through three pitches, and he threw a two-hitter against the number nine team in the country. So. Um, so we're very deep on the pitching staff. We have 11 strong on the, on, the, on the mound. The Florida trip allows us to establish that pitching staff. Mm -hmm. Going into conference play, playing three games on the weekend, you really need to have you know, five, <clears throat> excuse me, to six pitchers that you're gonna use uh, to get through the weekend. So this Florida trip helps us establish that bullpen and get some roles set up between closers and bullpen and starting guys. So that's why we really like playing every single day. And mm -hmm. I like to kind of, Toot our, toot our own horn with the, with the Florida trip. Uh, Maine is one of the most northern programs in the country, if you draw it across the, the lines across the, the country. And uh, by uh, um, March 20th uh, this year, we'll play, we'll lead the nation in games played. <laughs> so it's just that they're all on the road. So we, we always hold that dubious distinction that we lead the nation played in games, uh, in games played, so. You mentioned what the trip means. Uh, obviously a lot of roles probably not set in stone yet. Mm -hmm. This is a chance if you want to look at the, the out of conference schedule, mm -hmm. in conference schedule, really comes down to the America East play, mm -hmm. getting kids a chance to really solidify spots. Who's going to be that third starter? Who's going to be the guy you turn the mm -hmm. ball over to in long relief? Who's going to close your games out? Mm -hmm. And this Florida trip, I'd assume, is a place for people to solidify those positions. It is, because we're playing every day. And I say that we lead the nation in games played because not a lot of teams are going to play Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday like we do. We go right through, play double headers, and try to get guys playing time. And you're right, we, we need to get ready for conference play. <clears throat> we're not going to get an at-large bid in our conference. Mm -hmm. um, last year was a great example. I, you know, we, we went 20 and 6 in conference. Yeah. Um, we, we entered conference play last year with an RPI in, in the top 75, and after going 20 and six, we dropped down to 121. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's it just, it, it, you gotta be in the top 50 to get an, an at-large bid nowadays, kind of like the basketball tournament. Sure. Baseball mimics the basketball tournament. So with that being said, you know, it's very important to win your, your conference, either regular season for seeding, or just make the conference tournament and then win the games uh, to get you into the regionals, which we did last year. And uh, you know, got into the conference tournament and just fell in that championship game. Things just didn't go away. And I, and I thought last year we had a team that could have done some damage in a regional. And you'll see the America East team come out uh, and always do some damage in a regional. You know, whether it's Maine, Stony Brook. You know, two years ago had a great run. Uh, in 2011, we you know we we had a great showing in the regional. So um, that's really our goal is is to try to have a great season put together, get everything ready for conference, get in the conference tournament, and you know see how far we can go and try to get into a regional. Well, you know, it's nice to just think about the America's tournament surrounded by all the snow. Just the thought of, you know, perhaps, uh, you know, May and June just, you know, makes you, make you smile. So we'll look forward to that and good luck the rest of the way, Coach. All right. Thanks again. All right. Now time for the main dairy promotion board tip of the week.
One of my favorite things about Maine is the abundance of local food. The enthusiasm at farmers markets makes eating healthy food an easy choice, but during the chilly winter months, your favorite markets may not be open. Thankfully, local dairy, including yogurt, cheese, and milk, is available in Maine year-round. Visiting a dairy farm is a wonderful way to learn about where your food comes from and to get to know the farmers who work hard each day to provide us with a healthy and delicious glass of milk or slice of cheese. Learn more about how you can plan a visit to a dairy farm at drinkmainemilk.org. EBS Building Supplies knows time is the most valuable resource you have. That's why they offer free delivery anywhere in their service area. Fast, convenient, and free. That's the EBS way. So whether you're a professional contractor or a do-it-yourself homeowner, no delivery is too small or too big. And custom ordering is always available. Use EBS free delivery to make your life easier and your home improvement project complete faster. EBS Building Supplies. Can do. Just ask. Hey, Black Bear fans, this is Brandon McGowan, UMaine alum and NFL safety, reminding you that your body needs many kinds of foods to help you play hard and stay healthy. That's why it's important to make sure you fuel up each day with nutrient-rich foods such as low-fat and fat-free dairy, fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, and get at least 60 minutes of physical activity every day. Go to fuelupplay60.com to learn more about how you can eat healthy, get active, have fun, and make a difference. If you've been injured in an accident, this is the fifth message looking for their money. The insurance company may deny, delay, or offer to pay a lot less than what you deserve. Time is always on our side, my friend. Never. I repeat, never is that acceptable. This time, it's their lawyer. The law offices of Joe Bornstein. Call 1-800-CALL-JOE. The law offices of Joe Bornstein. Maine lawyers working for Maine people. Rule 67.2, Net Dislodgement. A player, including the goalkeeper, shall not delay the game by deliberately displacing a goalpost from its normal position. The referee shall stop play when a goalpost has been displaced. Welcome back to the Black Bear Insider, joined by Maine men's ice hockey sophomore Ben Hutton. Ben, thank you very much for being here. Thanks for having me. Uh, offensively, it's been a fantastic year for you. You know, tops in the nation and uh, put the puck in the net. Talk to me a little bit about that and really just have that kind of an honor to be, you know, number one across across the land. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a great honor and uh, accomplishment. But, I mean, i got to give credit to my teammates. I mean, they've been able to, uh, to find me the puck with some open space. And I've just been fortunate enough to be able to beat the goalie. So i got to give it to my teammates. They really helped me this year. Now, offensively, when you've been out there, your line of guys, what do you think has really gone – so well? Uh, I mean, just, just throwing pucks on net. I mean, you, you just throw a puck on net, anything can happen. I mean, goalie screened, he doesn't see it, gets deflected off the shin pad, just, you know, just throwing pucks on net. Sure. And for you guys here in Alphon Arena, things have gone, have gone pretty well. Talk to me a little bit about the crowd and how's that, how that's been for yeah, you. Yeah, the Alphon's amazing. I mean, we love it here. It's uh, the best fans of college hockey. And uh, anytime you do anything in the Alphon, you can always hear the fans just having your back, whether it's taking a hit, giving a hit, they, they always got your back. And now, here at Alphon, last weekend against Providence, a chance to really solidify some playoff position. Didn't go so well for you guys. Talk to me about what happened last weekend. Yeah, I mean, uh, they were both uh, tight battles there, and um, for, unfortunately, we, uh, we didn't come out with uh, a win or, or, yeah, one win at all, but I mean, we're, we're looking forward to coming into the playoffs and uh, really making a push and showing them that uh, that's, that's not what Maine hockey is about. It's about winning games. So hopefully in the playoffs here, we'll get some wins. So now moving forward, it's all about getting to the Hockey East semifinals and getting a chance to play at the Garden. Yeah, of course. I mean, once, once you get there, anything can happen. And you just got to be on your game uh, every shift. Uh, can't take any shifts off. Every, every, every minute, every, every second, you got to be going and battling your heart out and just uh, come up with a couple of wins. Navigating your way through the Hockey East all season long, you feel like if you can get into the mix, anything could happen. You think you could, uh, could win yeah, the whole anything thing? anything can happen. I mean, throughout the whole season, we've been playing with every team. Um, I think we beat, we beat BC, we beat Law. I mean, we've, we've played with the best teams and we're, we're in every game. So that's, uh, we're looking forward to it. And you leave Alphon Arena. You get to head down to the garden. What's it like playing there? Um, 
person I don't know, but I mean, I've heard it's, it's amazing. Uh, I heard that our main fans, the best fans, like I said, they come down, they, they're roaring down there as well. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. Now, in order to be successful, what needs to happen to keep moving forward? Uh, just just compete. I mean, I work the other teams. I mean, playoff hockey, it's, it's anyone's game. It's about who wants it the most. And if we outwork and outbattle the other teams, we should be fine. Now, I mean, I think everyone will probably have a an agreement on this there's there's nothing like playoff hockey and the energy that surrounds a game like this where you know the whole thing can turn on one puck one play anything can happen the energy in a building like this or wherever you're going to go just uh incredible right yeah playoff hockey is the best hockey you're going to play far and on no matter where you're playing what league when it's playoff hockey it's it's amazing it's something special all right well good luck the rest of the way all right thank you and now moving on random fans from the main men's ice hockey team were selected through the black bear nation app to have dinner with the team. It was a lot of fun. Take a look. First, first and foremost, I want to thank you all for everything that you do for us. Um, since I came here, because I had coached here before, uh, I've always recognized a special nature of uh, Maine hockey, what it means to this university, to its students, um, to everyone who works here, to everybody in this community, and ultimately all of the citizens of the state of Maine. I came up here for my first UMaine hockey game when I was a sophomore in high school to see one of my friends. He was like, you just have to, you have to experience it. It's not something that I can just tell you about. So I came up and that was when I was like, wow, I need to come here simply for hockey. And then coming here as a freshman, I joined the pep band and that put me into the Alphonde like all the time. Being a part of the Maniacs and just the entire family, like a roar that you get, like kids bring the their families bring their kids. Um, it's not just like an older scene, it's for everyone that's there, so. It's awesome to, to get to interact with the fans one-on-one, -on -one, you know, I mean, the other guys left and I got to stick around and talk to some of the people just about my experience and then they told me about just us signing a stick, how big of an impact it made. Um, they like funded one of their, like their entire project, you know, just signing a stick, you know, and it's like the fan appreciation is just, it's unbelievable. It made me realize how much they actually do appreciate everyone because you're in the stands and you know they appreciate it, like they make it known, but being able to like talk to Red and talk to the players and just like having them say like, oh my God, we love the band, we love the fans, it's a really great experience. You know they come out and you expect like the turnout, but you don't really get to see how passionate they are as a whole, you know, and I mean, even with the turnout here tonight, it was nice, it was intimate, like you got to talk to Coach Red and, you know, they really got to meet the staff and everything and, you know, I, I didn't know how, how passionate they really are, but, you know, the students really care and that's not something you find at a lot of schools. I hope you've gotten the message that we're eternally grateful for your passion and support for our team and I hope you'll keep it up and keep encouraging others to get here uh, whenever we play, because it does make a big difference. So, thank you.
Welcome everyone to the 25th Annual Scholar Athlete Recognition Ceremony. And thank you each and every one of you for being here tonight. It's an important evening. Uh, education is why we're all here. And so this is a great celebration tonight. And this year we celebrate 195 scholar athletes and 66 rising stars for a total of 261 honorees this year. This represents the largest number of student athletes recognized in our program's history. This is the 10th year that we will recognize over one half of our student athletes <laughs> for academic excellence. And I think you all deserve a round of applause. One of the things that we have enjoyed so much about this spirit that's in the Department of Athletics and the kinds of season we're having is there's just this higher elevation of spirit, success, and a real demonstration of team. I have the best job, I think, <clears throat> that there is here at the university. I get to be with you people every day. And uh, some days are better than others, but because you are goal-oriented and driven, and these people are driven, I have to say, academically, too. Did I make it? Did I make it to the Scholar Athlete? They have people, you know, they want to make it here. I had a few people ensure, even a month ago, that they were going to be here tonight. So, for the most part, I think everyone in this room understands the commitment that, that your coaches and the administration here at the University of Maine puts into recruiting you here and, and giving you this opportunity to, to better yourself academically and, and give you the opportunity to compete at the highest level, um, Division One level of athletics, intercollegiate athletics. You deserve this recognition, but your teammates aren't here. Everyone in the room doesn't have their entire team here. So that should be a goal of ours in the future. You know, it takes an awful lot of discipline and commitment for all of you to excel both academically and athletically. And I think everybody in this room, uh, you have earned their respect and uh, you demand and earn that respect. And, and you have mine, because I know how difficult that is to achieve success in both areas of your life. It's not an easy thing to do. And what you're going to learn as you go out into the real world is this family, that's what it is, it's a black bear family, and I'm telling you, I take this personally, wherever I go, when I'm fighting down in court down in Boston with the Eagles and the Terriers, I take it personally because we are a family. A couple of weeks ago, we joined the track team at practice. We put a GoPro on a few of the athletes to see exactly how they do what they do. Here's part two of that series. You really have to stay committed to it, just like any other sport. <sighs> My name's Connor Harris, and I'm on the UMaine track and field team. Basically, uh, before taking our jumps, we take what we call steps, just to make sure our measurements are right going down the runway, because um, when you're jumping, you have to jump on a specific board, and if you obviously, if you go over, you foul. So you have to take a right measurement of steps. And then after that, usually the runway consists of getting a good push off in the beginning just to get some speed and then you continue that speed into the jump and that speed will eventually carry you through. Um, in triple jump there's three different phases, first, second, third, um, basically consisting of three jumps, hop, a step and a jump and then into the pit. So that's the basics of it. For me, starting, starting when I was younger, um, I never, like, I was the same as everyone else. I thought of this as just like a running sport. And then I started really getting into it, and it's a lot more than that. Like I said, you have to put a lot of skill and a lot of time into it. And I feel like that kind of differs from a lot of other sports, especially since there's so many different events. Um, you know, you can spend all, I could spend all my time doing triple jump or doing high jump and master it and still have, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten different events that I could, you know, put my time into and work on it. It might sound cliche, but you, you gotta love it. You gotta love what you're doing in order to be good at it. Or, or to at least like be able to start getting good at it. I'm Wilson Adams and I'm a hammer and weight thrower. There's uh, two main parts to the throw. Uh, after the beginning you got the, the wind and the turns. And uh, the wind is basically where I take the weight and swing it over my head. And then my turns is where I do my three successive spins. Uh, the spins are, uh, you start out on your heel and you sort of 
flip onto your toe. And uh, you do that repeatedly. And the goal is to try and sort of accelerate through all of those turns. And, uh, and the hard thing is really getting the, especially with the weight, is getting the finish, uh, is actually finishing the weight off so it actually goes somewhere. You know, it's, uh, it's, that's when you start, uh, you know, dragging it or uh, not pushing the ball like you're supposed to. What I'll do is I'll normally sit in front of the circle or uh, right before I'm ready to throw and I'll just kind of close my eyes and feel myself going through the motions um, and feel how I want the throw to feel. And uh, I'll sort of like picture myself, picture looking at myself from like behind the circle and picture what I want that to look like too. So I just wanna, I just wanna be the best that I can be. And uh, what really drives me to keep going is the fact that there are other people out there that are they're throwing further than me. And while I, I know exactly where they, I know ex exactly how it feels, you know, to start down at the bottom of the totem pole and just work your way up gradually. It's, it's, it's a really good feeling, but the, I, I really wanna, the, you know, sort of reaching to be in that sort of elite is something that that a lot of people desire, because uh, especially in high school, I was I was towards the top of the country in my events in high school, and uh, to be up there, it's it's just kind of a, a surreal feeling. And uh, coming into college, it's like you're up here, and all of a sudden you're back on the bottom again, and, and you, you don't really know what to do and how to how to react to that. So you just start working your way up again, and uh, it makes me feel that all that work that I put into it for the past, you know, this would be my eighth year throwing the hammer now, uh, and my seventh throwing the weight. It's just uh, it's finally, finally good to see it all coming together and so, to something that I really want. Now that we've made our way into March, it's conference tournament time for many of the teams here in Orno. Now let's take a look at the U.S. Cellular upcoming schedule. Shouldn't you be able to count on your network to help dad get some likes from the middle of nowhere? To help embarrass mom from way out yonder? And to shoot the grandparents some love from just about anywhere? <laughs> when to share should be up to you, not your spotty wireless provider. At US Cellular, we started our network where the others left off, bringing 4G LTE to nearly 90% of our customers. We've got local and national coverage covered. US Cellular, hello better. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this week's episode of Black Bear Insider. Thank you very much for joining us and everyone who came on the program as well. If you want more information on the teams that you care about, go to goblackbears.com. They've got all the up-to-date information, highlights, score schedules that you could possibly need. Until next time, we will say, Go Black Bears! <laughs>